Hi everyone, it is Kate here for my September TBR. I have actually missed doing TBR videos and I feel very out of practice, like I kind of want to add 20 books to my TBR and so just bear with me and yeah, I've missed doing it and I kind of feel like I don't know how to do it now because I have so many that I want to read and I am having trouble prioritizing. So. We shall see what happens, but without further ado, my September TBR, the first on it is This Should Look Familiar. If you watch my Try a Chapter tag, this is the book that I picked, and a lovely viewer named Erica has agreed to buddy read this with me, so I am going to be buddy reading this with Erica. I'm really excited to read a Neville shoot, and it will be a good time. The next book that I'm really very excited for. I say that about all of my books on my TBR, but I truly am about this one, and that is September by Rosamond Pilcher. You can see the lovely 20% off tag right on the front, but anyhow, I'm very excited for this because I saved it for this month. I am one of those people who likes to do themey reading, and so I haven't read uh, Rosamond Pilcher since May, which it's been too long, Rosamond. So I'm really looking forward to this, and I don't even know what it's about, but I know it's Rosamond Pilcher, so that's all I need to know. It's going to be charming, it's going to be emotionally engaging, and that's all I need to know. And I will be doing a buddy read of this with Becky Ford, and really looking forward to it. Then another one that is a very iconic book that I have been somewhat intimidated by, but I will have a buddy to read it with, and I will be reading The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, and I will be doing a buddy read of this with Sarai from Sarai Talks Books. So we're both looking forward to this because we both love classics, and this is one that we both had not read. So I'll be happy to have someone to commiserate with or just be really happy about it with. We'll see what happens and how I feel about it towards the end. I don't know too much about this. I have seen previews for the Leonardo DiCaprio movie, so I think it's about a bunch of rich people who drink champagne. That's what I've like gathered from it so far. There's a very rich man named Gatsby, and that's about all I know. So I, I'm kind of happy to go into it blind. It seems very different from a lot of the classics that I read, though, so I think that would be good to kind of step out of my comfort zone, out of my wheelhouse. The next book, another buddy read, is Death Comes for the Archbishop by Willa Cather. And this will be my fourth Willa Cather to read, I think. And I'm really looking forward to it. This will be a buddy read uh, with Whitney from All the Shelves. And I kind of feel like I'm getting to audit a class whenever I read with her because she is an English teacher and is really great at just talking up books and making them sound super exciting. From what I can tell, though, it is about a vicar in the 1850s in New Mexico, which is a very, I think, unique kind of time, and just his life, and probably a turn of big events that happen in his life. Either way, it's Willa Cather, who I am trying to read all of hers eventually, so I'm definitely up for the challenge. Then another kind of iconic author that I will be reading, got some, uh, you know, F. Scott Fitzgerald, and then Willa Cather, and then add Ernest Hemingway into the myths, and that is For Whom the Bell Tolls, another classic that I'm pretty much going in blind for, which I'm okay with. And I will be doing a buddy read of this with Stephanie from That's What She Read. But from the synopsis on the back, it seems like it's set during the Spanish Civil War in the 1930s, and very different from what I usually read, but I kind of thought, you know what? I'm going to try out some Hemingway. I've read his short stories, and I was really impressed by those, so why not give a novel a try? Then I have a whole hodgepodge of books for you, ones that are kind of half-finished and all sorts of things. The first is Anne's House of Dreams. This is number five in the Anne of Green Gables series, and I actually started this, this is really pathetic, like all the way in January, and then just got distracted with other books, but when I got this beautiful, beautiful edition from my sister, I really wanted to continue reading with it. So I, I think it was about 11 chapters in, and this will definitely be some like comfort reading in the month. The next one is a buddy read with a college roommate, and that is A Chance to Die, The Life and Legacy of Amy Carmichael. She was a missionary in India for her whole life. She came from Wales, and she created an orphanage. She ran an orphanage and took in hundreds of children who were uh, rescued out of temple prostitution. So it should be really interesting and I don't think she ever got to like see her family again after she left. I'm only a couple chapters in, but 
I'm really impressed by it so far. And the author is Elizabeth Elliot. So for those of you uh, who are kind of like aware of, you know, famous missionaries, she's one of the ones whose husband was martyred. And she's just a really cool lady. I've read a couple of her books and I, I really appreciate everything that she writes. So looking forward to continuing on with that. And it really puts things in perspective when I kind of think about my first world problems to think about people whose lives are just such a sacrifice every day. Then, oh, mm, cozy. The third in the Elliott Family Trilogy. This is The Heart of the Family, and I'm really looking forward to reading some more Elizabeth Gouge. So, yes, must get. Then the next is, the next in the Inspector Wetsford series. This is the 20th, and it's End in Tears. I'm doing the audiobook, which this is my first time ever doing an Inspector Wexford audiobook. It's a very different experience, but I'm enjoying it. And yeah, this is set where this starts out where there is someone waiting on the side of a highway with a very, very heavy boulder and they're waiting for a specific car and they push the boulder off this cliff and onto the wrong car. And that is where the plot takes off. And I think Inspector Wexford just kind of has to figure out that the first boulder that fell was not an accident and try to keep the other person safe before they're hit by something or, you know, murdered. And it was a very interesting way to begin it. And lots of interesting things, of course, happening in his personal life with his children. And yeah, it's just never a dull day with Inspector Rex. I have a whole stack of mysteries. I've just really been craving mysteries and you can see from my August wrap-up that I just have been craving them so much. I kind of, when I did like May Mystery Month, I was kind of burned out for mysteries, but now I'm like fully back in gear and wanting to read all the mysteries. The first that I'll be buddy reading with Kate from the novel Nomad. This is The Air Affair. It's pretty well known. This is a more recent mystery and it it uses literary characters in the stories, and I think they kind of solve mysteries. I don't think it's my type of mystery, but I've heard enough people talk about it that I'm just too curious and I want to know what it's like. And if I don't like it, I will DNF it. I'm like unapologizing, unapologetic about that. So I, I will try it. I'll see what I think of it. And the next one that Kate and I will be buddy reading is The Lion in the Valley by Elizabeth Peters. And this is the fourth in the Amelia Peabody series, which is one of my favorite detective series where Amelia and her husband Emerson are Egyptologists and they travel through Egypt and unearth different artifacts. And they have a very strong-willed son named Ramses. They call him Ramses. And so it's just a really fun series, and it's been several months since Kate and I had run one together, and we're looking forward to doing that. Then some uh, browsing at the library turned into the stack that I have for you. The first is one that I wanted to get a physical copy of in addition to the audiobook that I own, and that is Agatha Raisin and the Vicious Vet. This is a great cozy series about Agatha Raisin, a retired lawyer who moves into the Cotswolds of England, and lo and behold, a murder happens in every book. So it was one that was just, it was good old fun. The writing is nothing like to write home about, but it was just really fun. And I'm looking forward to the next one in the series. I will, I think I'll try to do the audiobook though, because I really liked the narrator, but I just wanted to have the physical copy in case I wanted to kind of double up. Then one that I found browsing is by Lindsay Davis. This is called The Ides of April. It is a Flavia Albia mystery. And I basically picked it up because it was in the mystery section and it's set in like ancient Rome, which is very different from most mysteries out there. So I want to try it out. And it's the first in a series. She has another series. I can't remember the name of that character, but if I like that, you know, I might have to try this out. We'll see what I think of it. Then another cozy series that I want to try, and this was on my list of mysteries that I wanted to read this past month, but I didn't get around to it, so I had to recheck it out from the library, and that is Dying in the Wool by Francis Brody. Uh, Louise over at the Big Hair Bookworm, here it is if you're watching, and she has enjoyed the first three in that series. It's like nothing like the writing is not going to be anything breathtaking, but it's just so much fun, and it's just so much fun to read, just really lighthearted books sometimes, because I, I do read a fair number of classics, so it's nice to switch things up. And this is about a woman, I think, who just travels through the Yorkshire, and 
ends up just happening upon different mysteries. And it's nice to have lots of go-to series, and I'm looking forward to giving this one a try. Then another one that I found from browsing at the library is a set of cozies that are set on... I, I'm not sure if these are cozies. Anyhow, they are set on ships. All of them are set on ships. So the first one is Murder on the Lusitania, and this is by Conrad Allen. These are, I think the, in the first one, this husband and wife duo meet on the ship, and then I think there are seven total in the series before no more were published. So it sounds like it could be fun, short, fun mystery. And then one that I'm still not done with, but I love the audiobooks of these Louise Penny so much that I kind of don't want to read the physical copy of it. It just makes the man's voice for it just makes for so much fuller of an experience of this. And there's only two people ahead of me on Overdrive. So I think I might just hold out for the audiobook of this and continue on in that way. But I definitely want to finish this and I don't want to just leave it hanging because I love that series. And then also I wanted to try out finally some Swedish noir. This is a kind of genre of mystery, subgenre, that I hear about a lot, but I've been intimidated to try just because I feel like it will be too too gruesome and scary for me. But my dad has been watching on Masterpiece lately the Wallander, Kurt Wallander episodes, and I saw bits and snippets of some of them and it seemed actually kind of on the like Ruth Rendell level of scary so not too scary for me and so I got the first in the Kurt Wallander and that is Faceless Killers and this is just Swedish noir so really like intense gritty gripping mysteries and if it's too scary then I won't finish it but it's by Henning Minkel that's the author and I'm really looking forward to it because it'll be really fun if I do like this to have a whole new avenue of mysteries to check out that I didn't know about before and then the other that I got that was in that kind of list of that type of mystery is Death Angels by Ake Edwardson and this was one that I saw browsing in the library the cover it was a later one in the series, but it really drew me in. So if I end up liking this, I'll be really happy that I checked it out just because of the cover. And so this is a Chief Inspector Eric Winter novel. There's a whole series in this one. So more Swedish noir for me to try out. That's a very ambitious DBR. I'm not going to finish all of those, but they're all the ones that I would like to finish. Please let me know what you'll be reading in the month of September, and I will see you guys for another video soon. Bye!